Greetings, I'm Marguerite Rigoglioso of Seven Sisters Mystery School, and today I wanted to do an oracle on questions of justice and how the goddess, the goddesses of justice and the Blessed Mother Mary would respond to very sticky questions of justice of the kind that many of us are facing today. So first, a little foray into these goddesses. The Greeks knew the mother goddess of justice as Themis. She was a, a born of Earth, Mother Gaia, and Sky, um, Father Uranus. Her daughter was Dike. Themis was the goddess of natural law, universal law, karmic law, and her daughter Dike was born to her of the god Zeus. And Dike was the goddess of human law. So it's interesting to uncover that Themis was actually the advisor to Zeus. Zeus, being a character quite familiar on the archetypal level to a character that has been in the public media of late. Um, and so the idea of Themis as being the feminine advisor, always the one to advise and remind the bad boy patriarch of what goes around comes around. And her daughter, DK, being the product of her natural law, karmic law understanding, and the patriarchal energy of Zeus resulting in the need for what we call law on earth, human laws. These are very profound connections here because as the Greeks understood and as the early uh, people that we sometimes call the Gnostics understood, all of these great so-called archetypal principles were at their core divinity intelligences. They had life experience, they had personalities, so to speak, they could be consulted, they could be drawn upon. So what I'm inviting us to do now is to draw upon Themis and Dike. Just take a moment to say hello to these two mother-daughter goddesses. The daughter human law is, is the daughter of the mother of karma. Say hello to them and ask them to come into your life and our world in a greater way. Justice is feminine. And every time you pull upon them, you bring greater balance into your life because justice is really no more than balance, which is why in the later some of the later imagery, especially in Rome, where she was called Justitia. There, there is the balancing uh, scales. That's what this is about. Justice is about balance. Things becoming into balance. And as we know, there are many things in our world that are out, out of balance, including our own lives. So as we call upon Themis and Dike, we're asking them first to come into our own lives, our own being, and our own reality, our own worlds, asking them to show us where we may be out of balance, where we may be out of integrity, let's say. Did you cut in front of someone and steal their parking spot? Did you not get charged 
uh, for something at the store and you didn't go back and mention it? Did you try to get your way even though you know it wasn't really in integrity ultimately for you to do so? Did you have an advantage at the expense of someone else that, that you know of directly? What's going on in your life? Are you, are your scales of justice balanced? This also calls to mind the other goddesses of justice like Ma'at. She was the goddess of karma who would assess your heart on a scale. And if your heart was lighter than the feather, then you were in balance and you wouldn't have to pay the karma. And if not, you would be paying back that karma. So one thing that helps is that we don't have to be in control of justice entirely in the sense that whatever people sow is what they will reap. And if it's not in this lifetime, it will be in another. And we can look at our own lives, the degree to which we have been having suffering and misfortune is the degree to which we are working out some karma every time we move through a suffering with grace or an awakening or a greater understanding we release that karma for all time so this is a very intricate process that is happening and while seeming injustice brings up a feeling of anger there's always Themis, there's always Ma'at. These are the goddesses who will weigh the heart of each soul, of each perpetrator. And what I understand from Michael Newton and his books Destiny of Souls and Journey of Souls is it's not, this life review is not punitive, it's not about creating deep level punishment, it's about the soul going, mm, oh gosh, I messed up with that. Oh, I big time messed up with that. All right, what am I going to do to reconcile that? Well, I'm going to have these kinds of challenging experiences in my next lifetime, and I will hope to awaken so that I may transmute that energy. So I heard a story of a teacher whose stepmother in um, her husband's last stages with dementia had the man sign papers to relinquish trust funds for his children over to her. And rather than getting into large lawsuits, the children just decided to let it go. Because on some level they knew that Themis, or what they might call Mother Divine, was going to handle that matter in a different way. Yes, would it have been nice for them to have that money? Mm hmm. Would it have been worth the acrimony, negativity, darts flying for years and years it, uh, uh, to launch a lawsuit? They decided no. Now everyone has a different decision. For some people it is their karma to launch some kind of move like that because you're reconciling having felt completely disempowered in another life and you're wanting justice to happen. So each person needs to consult very deeply with spirit on these matters so it's not, there's no one answer. I know another person who, who is definitely um, in a legal struggle because it has been determined that it would be an egregious form of self-abuse not to be. And this situation is rectifying lifetimes of all of these characters having been operating and uh, this person being really deeply harmed in those lives. So now there's a justice balancing that's happening. So 
The point is for us not to go into knee-jerk lawsuit or retaliation, whatever it's going to be, but deeply consulting with spirit about what is right action for you. Spending time on this. Going back to the global picture, what, what we can do is pray to DK and to Themis for their influence to flow into our world again. The story goes that DK became very disheartened with humanity and its shenanigans. And she went up, back up to Mount Olympus, in other words, the astral planes. She left her presence on the planet, left here, and just said, oh, fight amongst yourselves, essentially. So we want to call DK, ask her to, to assist with us in this. Ask Themis to assist, this mother-daughter pairing. They go together, human law, cosmic law, karmic law, natural law. There was also Demeter Thesmophoros, the lawgiver. The law, the giver of karma, the dispenser of karma. She was the one that people would consult when they experienced the initiation in the Eleusinian Mysteries. And so there are these justice goddesses that we can call on. And it's up to all of us, of all genders, and especially women, to pull these energies into the world, to pull these energies into our hearts. I saw next to the news trumpeting uh, so-called, you know, legal decision. There were women in India, thousands of them going into the streets to protest a law they felt was unjust about human rights. So you see there's one thing and then another. And where will, where will those scales of justice balance out. Again, first within our own hearts, are we being just to ourselves, to others? I'd like to now open the floor, so to speak, to Mother Mary to ask for her opinion. And what I have learned is that Mother Mary was not a cloistered woman. She, she was cloistered for a part of her life, but then um, during the life of Jesus and afterward, she was out there. And this is something I'm going to be talking about in my Mother Mary Mystery teachings. She was out there. She was a teacher. She was a mentor to others. She was having them teach. What were they teaching? Well, the principles of love and compassion and Jesus, right? So, not in a proselytizing way, not in a way to try to control and break people and persuade them, but rather in a way to say, hey, here are some thoughts and principles, try them out. Here's how I'm trying them out in my life. Do I look like a role model to you? Um, make your own decisions as to whether this is something you would like to embrace. There were no shenanigans, there were no um, control beings, programming beings associated with any of that at the beginning. And there are many of us who are still operating that way where these teachings are not being used to control and corral and, in, you know, control people's behavior and so forth and so on. No, it's about offering a plate of beauty from which people can pick and decide what they want to do and have in their own life, whether it will bring greater benefit. So I'm asking Mother Mary about her advice in this situation that we've been facing globally. And 
and nationally and her the response that I feel from her is <laughs> she's basically saying everyone knows the answer to this question if you just become quiet the answer to this question is can you be as loving and peaceful as possible in the face of this and in the face of every day Can you be compassionate? Can you understand the pain that is underneath all of the injustice and all of the behaviors that led to human laws going into effect? And can you take from that beautiful plate the principles, the teachings, and the practices that will work for you to create beauty, passion, peace, and balance in your life? Can you be an example to others? And can you be a teacher through example and perhaps even through direct teaching? Can you start in your own world the people who are around you who are with you, whom you see on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. Can you be that? Can you be that change? That is what it comes down to because, yes, anger is a natural response to injustices. And anger is a natural response to the consequences of, of other people's behaviors when they affect us and our world in ways we feel are negative, causing damage, causing suffering. And yet, when did con trying to control someone and enforce them to act or believe or behave in a different way ever work? It never transformed the person. Think of your own life when there were people who wanted you to be and do things in a certain way. They meant well. They may have even had good teachings for you, but the way in which they were presenting them to you was so offensive and unappealing. It was violative, not inviting. This is all about inviting, being invitational. So many of us, and I would include myself in this number, me, Marguerite, being a passionate person of a great deal of will, I often am a firebrand when it comes to teachings and ideas and opinions and so forth, and yet I've stumbled so many times when I, when I wasn't invitational. And when I came at people with an idea of, of believe this, you must believe this, this is what's right. Oh, deep breath in, deep breath out with that one. Now for other people, it's, it's, it's a different issue. It's a, it's a matter of finding your voice, finding your throat chakra, finding your will. We, we are all in, in this in different ways, but it's you in consultation with spirit. What is your soul calling you to do? Is it calling you to come out and be more vocal? Is it calling you to pull back and be more invitational? So when we see these things going on, we become dismayed. If these things are disturbing you to the point where you are not sleeping, where you are ruminating, where you are sending poison darts to others, then understand that perhaps you have gotten hooked into the game and there are larger forces that love to hook us into the game. Can you pull back? Can you pull back your darts and your arrows? Can you lay them on the ground? Can you create a boat, a raft with them on these waters? Everyone knows ultimately the answer to this question of why and what to do and how can we make it better? And a 
again, the answer is not out there. The answer is in you. That's where it starts and that's where it ends. You can have tremendous effect in the world by just placing your little pebble in the lake of life. Your little pebble sending ripples out that are, if you've noticed, ripples are gentle. They're not a tsunami. Tsunami is something else. And yes, those are forces of, of nature that, that work and operate, particularly when, what, things are out of balance. So, coming back to your own pebble, which is also your own breath. How can you come to peace and equanimity in your life, in the face of seeming injustice, of seeming maddening events? Can you also see that part or all of that is illusion in the sense of the media organ being used for that? If you notice an injustice in your world, your immediate world, what is your response to that? Is it anger? Is it making the other person wrong? That would be my response, just FYI, you know, me, Marguerite. <laughs> So what we're being shown is to transmute and temper our responses because somebody coming, creating an intervention from a peaceful and loving place has the power of 10,000 suns. The power of 10,000 suns. Literally, the power to move mountains. Don't underestimate inner peace. And this is why Themis was also the mother of Irene, peace, as well as DK. You see how it's all related. We're all working together when it comes to these divine feminine energies and beings, is what Mother Mary is saying. So let's call upon the mother, which is ultimately calling upon the Holy Womb Chakra and the Sacred Heart and the Sight. It is said that justice is blind, but in fact, justice is all-seeing. So it's important that we remove the scales from our own eyes, so to speak, if you get the multiple nature of these words. Remove the scales from your own eyes. See deeply. And walk with a an empowered and grounded heart. Seeing deeply means seeing with third dimensional vision. It means being able to see past, present, and future all at once and also how your very actions will influence that future. So what are you going to do in a way that makes an effective ripple? These are the thoughts for today. May they assist you in this time. May they empower you. May they allow you to feel useful and productive in this world in the face of the play that is going on. And may it help you bring well-being to yourself and to all of reality. Blessed be.